Let's be honest, you're an awesome engineer with an awesome app and you are using threading to the max. Sadly though, managing all those individual threads and assigning work between them is causing you to lose your hair. My name is Colt McCandless and please, don't join the bald club. Instead, use the thread pools class, which is an ideal primitive for breaking up lots of work into little buckets. See, historically, it was commonplace that applications would use a dedicated thread model. Uh, that is, one thread that only deals with database rights, while a separate thread only handles streaming of music, and a third one only handles networking. Uh, these setups are okay, because the amount of work per thread isn't that large, and it's okay to handle this work in sequential order. But there reaches a point where this model starts to fall over. Uh, say, for example, that you've got 40 bitmaps to decode, and each decode takes like four milliseconds or something. Uh, putting all of this work on a single dedicated thread is a bad idea, since it'll take 80 milliseconds total to get all that work done in a sequential fashion. On the other hand, if you created 10 threads and let each one decode four bitmaps, then you'd end up only taking 16 milliseconds total. But then, of course, you run into the problem of how to properly pass the work around between those threads, schedule that work, and then managing of those threads. Uh, yeah. Before you start stressing out about writing all that code, don't worry. This is exactly what thread pool executor primitive is for. Uh, basically, this class will just let you spin up a number of threads and toss blocks of work to execute on it. Thread pool executor handles all of the heavy lifting of spinning up the threads, load balancing work across those threads, and even killing those threads when they have been idle for a while. Uh, basically, it handles all the heavy lifting of super parallel processing on your behalf. All you have to do is split up the work. But there's a small caveat here. How many threads should your thread pool have? I mean, technically speaking, you have the ability to create as many threads as you want, but that's not ideal. See, CPUs can only execute a certain number of threads in parallel. Once you get above that number, then the CPU has to start deciding which threads get the next free block of processor time based on how important they are. Which means that if you keep eventually adding threads, you'll hit a break-even point where your computation isn't getting any faster, even though the number of threads that you have has increased significantly. And it's also important to note that each of these threads aren't free. Uh, each thread costs you about 64k of memory in minimum, and that adds up quickly, especially in situations where the call stacks can start growing pretty large. As such, your app needs to find a sweet spot between the number of cores and the point of diminishing return with the number of threads. Thankfully, once again, the thread pool executor class has got you covered. When creating your thread pool, you can specify the number of initial threads and the number of maximum threads. As the workload in the thread pool changes, it'll scale the number of alive threads to match. Oh, and a quick note, the value returned from get available processors may not reflect the number of physical cores in the device. Now, see, some devices have CPUs that will deactivate one or more cores depending on the system load to save battery. So if your device has two CPUs, but one of them is asleep, this value could return one. And of course, thread pools won't solve all of your threading problems. As mentioned earlier, unless you're dealing with lots and lots of work packets all the time, this thing's kind of overkill. It's best to use things like handler threads or async task loaders for specific types of work blocks and only throw the massive computing problems at the thread pool. And for you power users out there, remember that render script might be a better alternative to large scale parallel work on Android devices, but that's a whole separate set of videos that we haven't gotten into yet. And don't forget that SysTrace is an amazingly powerful tool that lets you visualize how work is flowing through the threads in your application. It's a great way to validate that things are working as intended and also see all the other crazy threads that are being worked on by other parts of your app. And that's the trick with performance, isn't it? I mean, you can make assumptions, but things don't always work the way you think, which is why you need to check out the rest of the Android performance patterns videos. And don't forget to join our Google Plus community to ask a lot of hard threading questions as well. So keep calm, profile your code, and always remember, perf matters.